Good evening, and welcome to Wednesday Night Nuggets. I'm Pastor Colin Ford at Alum Rock Christian Church in San Jose, California. And we like to take a few minutes out in the middle of the week on Wednesdays just to take a look at what God's Word has to say to us. And before we get into the message, will you take your Bibles? And uh, I think you'll get more out of it if you read along with us. We are looking the last couple of weeks at a pretty common um, verse. We've used it a couple of times. So if you'll turn to 2 Peter, beginning at the second verse, the second chapter, excuse me, we're going to read verses 1 through 10. So 2 Peter, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. But... There were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereignty of the Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with their stories they have made up. Their condemnation has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but that sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on the ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, If he did not condemn the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by the filthy lies of lawless men, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so... Then the Lord knows how to rescue godly men from trials and to hold the unrighteous for the day of judgment while continuing their punishment. This is especially true for those who follow the corrupt desire of the sinful nature and despise authority. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Many people often ask questions about religions and cults and the occult, and sadly, many Christians often do not know the answers. Over the course of the next few weeks, we are going to look at different religions and cults and compare them to Christianity. Then you should be able to defend your faith by knowing what others believe. We're going to present each religion or cult on a direct comparison with biblical Christianity. Each week we'll compare a religion or cult through a series of 10 questions. And if you'd like that worksheet to take notes, it is on our website. So check that out. We'll go through the 10 questions, giving you the answers. And in order to be able to compare them, it is important to understand what we believe as biblical Christians. But before we get into the details about other religions, we know that biblical Christianity is not a religion, but rather a relationship with Jesus Christ. We also need to know that often cults in the occult usually have secret rites or rituals associated with membership, and there are often multiple levels that one can obtain. Christianity, on the other hand, rests on the biblical facts that there is only one way to be saved and only one way to get to heaven, and that is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Some of the following material that I'm using was taken from two really good books. The first, World Religions Made Easy by Paul Cardin, available from Rose Publishing, and Handbook of Today's Religion by Josh McDowell and Don Stewart from Nelson Publishing, which is a big fat book that weighs about two pounds, but it's got a lot of information in there. So if you're looking for more in-depth information, I highly recommend those two books for you. So tonight, we are going to look at Buddhism. So our first question is, who was the key person, founder, date, and location? Buddhism was founded by Gautama 
Siddhartha, who lived from 563 to 483 before Christ. Siddhartha is known as Buddha, or Pali, the Enlightened One. Buddhism was found in what is now Nepal and in India as a reformation and partial rejection to Hinduism. Siddhartha was born into a ruling class and led a life of ease in which he was protected from all knowledge of human misery. When he subsequently encountered an old man, a sick man, and a decaying corpse, the shock sent him into a search to find the solution to life's sufferings. He went on a pilgrimage of inquiry and meditation, but grew frustrated with the Hindu teachings that he had found. One day, while sitting under a Bodhi tree, or tree of wisdom, in northern India, he suddenly experienced enlightenment or awakening, realizing that souls have the illusion of being reincarnated and floating through eternity, bound in ignorance and suffering senselessly in one body after another. Who is God? Buddha himself did not believe in the existence of God. Others speak of Buddha as a universal enlightened and consciousness, or sometimes even as a God himself. The existence of a personal creator and Lord is denied, and that obviously flies in the face of what the Bible tells us. The world operates, Buddha says, through natural power and law, not divine command. Buddhism is often considered a kind of, kind of atheistic religion. Central to Buddha's teachings is the idea that pursuing or knowing God is irrelevant and can, in fact, interfere with one's quest for enlightenment. Buddha considered the Hindu gods as beings under the power of karma and they needed to become human, they needed to convert to Buddhism, and then they could achieve spiritual awakening. Buddha considered his mission to guide souls through the web of suffering and ignorance into salvation or through nirvana. Buddhism denies the existence of a personal God, rejecting the precepts of the Bible. Who is Jesus? Jesus Christ is not part of any historic Buddhist worldview. Buddhists in the West today generally view Jesus as an enlightened teacher, while Buddhists in Asia believe Jesus is an avatar or a bodhisattva, but not a god. The present Buddhist leader, Dalai Lama Tenzin Gaitso, states that Jesus lived previous lives and reached a higher state as a bodhisattva or enlightened person. Interesting to also note here that the Dalai Lama practices the occult and consults the spirit-possessed Nichang oracle to make state decisions. Buddhists believe there is no such thing as sin against a supreme being. So Jesus is not needed to provide salvation. Again, a total rejection of biblical teachings. Question number four, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is not part of this belief. However, Buddhists do believe in spirits, and some practice deity yoga and even invite spirit possession. What are the key writings in Buddhism? The Mahavatsu, the great story, is a collection covering Buddha's life story. The Jakarta tales are 500 stories of the former lives of Buddha. The Pali Canon, or Tripitaka, meaning three baskets, is an oral tradition of the life and sayings of Buddha. The Tantras are the main sacred scriptures of Vajrayana Buddhism, 
Tibetan tantras are the main scripture of Vajrayana Buddhism. Sorry about the pronunciation. Tibetan tantism is known for its emphasis on secrecy, magic, guru devotion, and sexual yoga. So, according to Buddha, how is one saved? The religious lives of individual Buddhas vary, uh, Buddhists excuse me, vary greatly, as do their views on salvation. Some strive for deliverance from their personal cravings through obedience to the Noble Eightfold Path. The Noble Eightfold Path consists of having right understanding, right thoughts, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right endeavor, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Others follow the teachings of a Buddhist master in order to achieve enlightenment. Still others hope to enter paradise by placing their faith in the merits of a compassionate Buddha or Bodhisattva. However, the Buddhist may seek it. Ultimate deliverance is the same for all Buddhists. They believe that salvation is achieved by one's own uh, virtuous works and by attaining the state of nothingness known as nirvana. This is a permanent end to this cycle of rebirths and suffering. The King James Bible, the authorized version, clearly states that salvation is a free gift that cannot be earned or willed. You can check out John 1.12, John 3.16, and Ephesians 2.8.9 to refresh your memory. Seven, what happens after death. Buddhists widely believe that, depending on one's karma, upon death, one may go to one of six distinct spiritual planes. Three fortunate realms, those of demigods, gods, and humans, and then you may go to three unfortunate realms, those of animals, hungry ghosts, and hell. Again, a note to self here. As Christians, the Bible teaches that Jesus has prepared a place in heaven for all who believe in him where we will be able to abide with him for eternity. The Bible also teaches that there is indeed a place called hell in which we are separated from God for eternity. Question number eight. What are the major celebrations? Buddhists celebrate the following holidays. Yuposatha, which are four holidays, or holy days, excuse me, every month. Vesak, an annual commemoration of Buddha's birthday, usually celebrated in May or June. Vasa, an annual rainy season retreat, which usually occurs between July and October. And Yulambana, All Souls Day, or Hungry Ghost Festival, emphasizing veneration of ancestors, and this usually occurs in August. What are other beliefs and practices? The five sillas of moral conduct require to refrain from killing, theft, sexual misconduct, lying, or evil speech, and prohibit the use of illicit drugs and liquor. Zen Buddhism rejects theoretical knowledge and sacred writings in favor of experiencing sudden enlightenment through intensive seated meditation. Some Buddhist groups talk about an eternal Buddha or life force. Some Mahayana Buddhist schools venerate enlightened spirits through demonstration of respect, meditation, and gift giving. Through the doctrine of assimilation, the belief system of many other religions are blended into the form, their particular form of Buddhism. Bodhisattva is Sanskrit for enlightened existence or an awakening. In Mahayana is 
one who has achieved enlightenment or Buddhahood, but delays the ultimate reason, or excuse me, de delays the ultimate release or nirvana in order to first alleviate the suffering of others by his own merits. Dharma is Sanskrit, which means to upload or to support. Uphold, excuse me, I'm getting too computery here. Dharma is Sanskrit, which means to uphold or to support. This refers to the order which makes the complexity of the natural and spiritual worlds possible. Dharma is a central concept in Indian civilization, civilization, both Hindu and Buddhist, where it governs ideas about the proper conduct and living. It is symbolized by a wheel seen in the center of the national flag of India. Check that out sometime. The Lama is a Tibetan Buddhist equivalent of the Hindu word guru, commonly translated to mean spiritual teacher. Skanda is Sanskrit, which means heap, one of the five identifying elements or aggregates that constitute the human individual. And they disperse at one's death and then reform at one's physical rebirth. They are form, feeling, perceptions, thought, and consciousness. So, what are other branches of Buddhist? There are many, but I will give you a few of the main ones. Theravada is called the path of elders. Mahayana is the enlightenment through meditation. Vajrayana is a, combines Mahayana, Indian Tantra, and the occult Bon religion of ancient Tibet. Shinto Buddhism was a state-sponsored form of Buddhism in Japan imposed upon the people in the 1940s. Nikrian Shosu Buddhism is, has shown outstanding growth in the past 50 years, especially in Japan, and it is a reaction or rejection of the state-sponsored Shinto Buddhism. Zen Buddhism is very popular today and em has an emphasis on meditation. They say, look within, you are the Buddha. And sometimes they experiment with mind-to-mind -mind communication without the use of words. So to summarize all this, there are radical differences between Buddhism and Christianity that make any attempt to recon re of reconciliation between the two faiths impossible. There is absolutely no place for the Bible, God, or Jesus in Buddhism. Another problem with Buddhism is that the many forms it takes. Consequently, there is a wide range of beliefs in the different sects, with much of that contradictory not only to the Bible, but to each other. There is accountability only to oneself and not to anyone else, especially not to God. By understanding these 10 questions and comparing other cults and religions to Christianity, I hope that you will be able to defend your faith. Let us pray. Father God, we just uh, thank you for the understanding of Buddhism tonight and, and uh, how these folks are lost, Father, and they just don't get it. Father, we just pray that if someone who believes in Buddhism comes across our path, Father, that you would make us strong and bold enough to share the Bible with them and let them know in a, in a kind and understanding way how that they are truly lost. Father, we know that Buddha is dead, and we know that the founders of Christian science and unity we talked about last week are dead, but we know for certain that Jesus Christ is alive and well, seated at your right hand, and is an advocate for us, forgiving us our sins if we simply turn to him repent our ways, and ask for forgiveness. Father, we uh, thank you and love you. Help us to be bold defenders of our faith. These things we pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen.
Well, thank you for joining us for Wednesday Night Nuggets. We hope that you are learning a little bit about these different uh, religions and cults as we go along here, and hopefully you'll, you've found out some things that you didn't know and that you will be able to indeed defend your Christian faith. If you have any questions about any of this, please contact the church. If you have any subjects that you would like us to talk about in coming Wednesday Night Nuggets, let us know. Give us a call at 408 408- 2581237 or check us out on our website alamrock.cc good night and god bless